Hey guys, quick biochemistry basics here. Let's talk about mass spectrometry. The analytical technique in which molecules are converted into ions which are separated based on their mass to charge ratio is called mass spectrometry. The mass spectrometer performs four main functions. Number one, production of ions which are in gaseous phase. Number two, acceleration of ions using electric or magnetic field. Number three, separation of ions in mass analyzer. And number four, detection of ions based on their mass to charge ratio. In this technique, because we are dealing with production and detection of ions, we need to have very strong vacuum. Without vacuum, the ions produced will collide with the air molecules and not reach the detector. The vacuum pump connected with the mass spectrometer generates a vacuum having air pressure of 1 microdor. The atmospheric pressure at sea level is usually 760 dor. This is equivalent to 760 millimeters of mercury in an inverted column. 1 tor means the pressure is now up to 1 millimeter of mercury in the inverted column and 1 microtor is a negligible amount of pressure. Let's talk about production of ions in the gaseous phase. A neutral molecule can be converted into an ion either by adding an electron or by removing an electron. The addition of electron will generate negatively charged ion known as anion, while the removal of electron will generate positively charged ion known as the cation. Any of the ions can be used for the detection of ions in mass spectrometer. There are several ways to generate ions for mass spectrometry. Let's talk about them. Number 1. Electron impact ionization. Number 2. Chemical ionization. Number 3 fast atom bombardment and number four electrospray ionization electron impact ionization in this method a stream of electrons is generated using a heated metal filament the other end of the chamber has a positively charged electrode that accelerates the electrons the energy of accelerated electrons is usually at 70 electron volts now, the energy of 70 electron volts is very important. According to de Broglie matter wave equation, wavelength of particle is given as lambda is equal to h upon mv. Here, m is the mass and v is the velocity. The product of mass and velocity is the momentum p. The energy of electron can be described as e is equal to p square by 2 me. Your P is the momentum and Me is the mass of electron. Making arrangements in the equation, we get lambda is equal to h upon square root of 2 Me. At the energy of 70 electron volts, the wavelength of electron is around 0.14 nanometers. Now, 0.14 nanometers is equivalent to the dimension of the chemical bond in the organic molecules. Hence, at this energy, the probability of electrons hitting the molecule and breaking the chemical bonds is maximum. When the chemical bond is broken, the electrons present in the bond are released, giving rise to positively charged ion. If the energy of accelerated electrons is not 70 electron volts, then the wavelength of electron will not match the molecular distance. Hence, Electrons will pass through the molecule without breaking the chemical bond. Now, besides keeping energy of electrons to 70 electron volts, to further increase the probability of electrons hitting the molecule, a weak magnetic field is applied parallel to the direction in which the electrons are traveling. This magnetic field makes the electrons to move in a helical path. 
Hence, electron spends more time in the chamber and the probability of electron hitting the molecule increases. Let's see the working of electron impact ionization. The sample is first vaporized and introduced in the ionization chamber through the sample inlet. The high energy electrons collides with the molecule and breaks it into small molecules. And as the electrons are released, the fragmented molecules will have a positive charge. To analyze these fragmented molecules, there is a repeller electrode which has a positive charge. The repeller electrode repels the positively charged molecular ions and accelerates them so that they can enter the analyzer. Chemical ionization. In this method, we use molecular ions such as methane ion or ammonium ion instead of electrons. Because ammonium ions or methane ions are large in size as compared to an electron, the probability of ionization of sample molecule increases even more. Fast atom bombardment. In this technique, the sample molecules are mixed with involatile solvents such as glycerol, thioglycerol, etc. This mixture is applied on the probe and bombarded with a beam of inert gas such as argon, helium, or xenon at high velocity. This bombardment ionizes the sample molecules which are to be analyzed. Electrospray ionization. In this method, solution of sample molecules is spread in an electric field to produce ions. This method is popular for analysis of biomolecules such as proteins and DNA. The sample molecules can be mixed with solvents such as methanol, acetonitrile, acetic acid, formic acid, ammonium hydroxide, etc. along with water in 1 is to 1 ratio. Depending on the pH of solution, the sample molecules can either have positive or a negative charge. This solution having charged molecules is passed through a syringe to create an aerosol. This process is known as nebulization. Because of vacuum in the chamber, the solvent molecules evaporates, leaving the charged molecule to enter the analyzer. To increase the rate of solvent evaporation, a strong potential difference of about 3000 volts is applied at the end of syringe. This makes the solvent molecules electrically charged. As the solvent molecules and the sample molecules have same charge, the rate of evaporation increases as both the charges repel each other. Mass Analyzer the charged ions are allowed to pass through a curved magnet. The charged particles in the magnetic field experiences a force that is given by F is equal to QVB. The separation of ions occurs based on mass to charge ratio. Once the ions are separated, they are detected by the detector and the information is obtained on the computer.